In today's gospel reading, the theme of Christ as Good Shepherd is continued. Notice how our Lord says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. So our Lord makes it clear that he is the Messiah. The Jews are asking, you know, how long are you going to keep us in in suspense? If you are really the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Christ says that he, he's already revealed it to them, but if they don't believe in him, then look at his works. So his works testify to the truth. And in fact, we could say the same about the Catholic Church. Yes, there's a lot of corruption in the Catholic Church, many bad people in the Catholic Church. That is true, but it's only the Catholic Church that raises these great saints, saints such as Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I mention her most of the time because most people are familiar with her because she didn't live that long ago. But we can go on with St. Francis of Assisi, St. Thomas Aquinas, and just so, so many saints. So the saint, the church produces these great saints. And in the church, we have all kinds of miracles. And all of these things point to the fact that the Catholic church is the true church that Christ established. And in many ways, the, the church is um, takes the place of Christ. In other words, the church is the mystical body of Christ. So what Christ did here on earth in his physical body to teach, govern to sanctify the church continues to do as a whole so the official teachings of the church for example is so it's important for us to realize this so we are saved by christ and we are saved by the church or through the church so if the, if the catholic church is the true church of christ the ideal is that everyone belong to that catholic church and that we who are members of the catholic church spread the faith to others, and bring them into the one true fold. Now, if you recall, in the um, just the past few days, we were talking about Christ as, as the good shepherd, and it mentioned that Christ is the shepherd who leads his flock. He leads us to heaven. He, he leads us out of error and sin. He leads us away from things that are harmful. But if you recall, it also mentioned that he is the gate. So he's the gate through which we pass into heaven. And it's only through him that we can make it to heaven. Only Christ can open the gates of heaven. But this um, relationship of shepherd to sheep is a very important one that we need to reflect upon. So yes, we think of him as our shepherd. But notice how our Lord a number of times had mentioned that they hear his voice and they follow him. The sheep hear his voice and follow him. And in the other passages, it mentions that they know his voice. They recognize his voice. And for most of us, we tend to miss the significance of this, which would have been more obvious to people living at the time of our Lord, who understood more about farming and, and, and sheep and what sheep are like. So somebody had sent me a video of a farmer who had sheep on his farm. And some people come to his farm, and th there's a number of them, and three of them try to call the sheep. And the farmer teaches them, you know, how to call the sheep, you know, to what to say or, or to make cer certain sounds or, or whatever. But the sheep just totally ignore these strangers. And then so they go one by one, all three of them. They try for a while, and nothing happens. The sheep totally ignore them. But when the farmer calls them, the sheep look up and the sheep start coming towards the farmer. In other words, they recognize his voice. And this is very important for us to, to understand the significance of this. So notice how our Lord says, I know them and they follow me. So I know them and they know me. They recognize my voice. So sheep, whether they were, you know, um, being led from one place to another by a shepherd or even on a farm, after a while, they get to know the one who takes care of them, the one who provides for them. And they learn to trust that shepherd or that farmer who's taking care of them. And so they will listen to the voice of that farmer or that shepherd. So they have to spend time with them. They have to get accustomed to the voice of the shepherd in order to know who the shepherd is, to recognize his voice and to distinguish his voice.
from amongst the voices of many others. So the whole message here for us is that we have to spend time with our shepherd. We have to spend time listening to his voice and hearing his voice so that we can recognize his voice and recognize that when other people are telling us things that contradict him, that we should not listen to those other people. So the only way that we can spend time with our shepherd and to get to know his voice is by praying, number one. And number two, by reading the scriptures, especially the New Testament, with a focus on the Gospels. So in the Catholic Church, we tend to focus on the Gospels. We scan for the Gospel reading to make us more attentive if we kind of dozed off for the first and reading and if, if it's Sunday's second reading also you know sometimes in the early church the readings were fairly long so it, we stand up to remind us to be alert to be very attentive same as when we make the sign of the cross over our forehead over our lips and over our chest it's a reminder to us that this is something very important we ask God's blessings on our mind to think about what we are going to hear to to proclaim it with our mouth. We ask God's blessings on our mouth so that we can proclaim what we hear. So not just that it goes in one ear and out the other, but that we will we be able to remember and to relate to others the very things that we hear and that we will treasure these words in our hearts, that we will you know, truly appreciate the significance of the words that we hear. In other words, we will meditate upon these words. So uh, it, it's very important that we do this so we can get to know the shepherd by reading the scripture and, and by prayer. And it's through this life of prayer that we enter into a relationship with Christ. And when it comes to making it to heaven, you know, some people have a wrong view of God, as I had mentioned, and they think, oh, yes, um, if I am good and, and, and I do everything that God wants me to, I will make it to heaven and I will be totally happy in heaven. And in a sense, that's correct. But they miss the point that part of being in heaven is being madly in love with God and madly in love with everyone else. And yes, you will be totally fulfilled. But part of that fulfillment, the, the main part of that fulfillment will be love. Knowing that you are loved and you will be loved by God, who is the source of all things. He is the one who has created you for happiness. And he is the one who can fulfill your deepest longings. He is the one who can, you know, uh, totally make you to be the way that you are intended to be. So in other words, God will be the source of our happiness. We will love him. We will be in a loving relationship with him. And I tell people that if we expect this after our lives here on earth, then we have to work at that relationship here and now, because if we are not, or if someone is not working on their relationship with Christ here and now, in other words, if they're not praying, if they're not making the effort to, to read the scriptures, then basically what they're saying is, I don't want to have a relationship with God. And if you don't want to have a relationship with God, God is going to respect your choice. So he's not going to force you to have a relationship with him after you die. You must choose that. But if you don't choose it now, it means you're not going to choose it after death. So we need to follow Christ, who is our shepherd, our good shepherd. And we need to be able to recognize his voice. And the only way we can recognize his voice is if we know his voice.